Hi everybody, I'm Lisa S and you're watching me on Imagine TV. And before you know it, Fuck it up, girl. Get out. Another surprise awaits. Your journey starts now. It was hard. It was a little bit hard. It was kind of nice though. I had spent, you know, 10 months not really working. And so it was exciting to get back to work again. It made me feel normal again. I was almost 200 pounds when I gave birth. That's a large, large number as I'd never been over in my life over 140 something pounds. And so um, I had a lot of work to do and I only had two and a half months to do it. And so as soon as I got the okay from the doctor, I started doing cardio six days a week two hours a day, just burning it off, burning it off. It was all hard work, um, a good diet, healthy eating, healthy lifestyle. Before I got pregnant, I was more into high impact sports. So it's a lot easier to keep um, exercising because it's always interesting when you're doing boxing, kickboxing, Pilates, uh, yoga, all these things. I was constantly changing it. But when you're pregnant, you have to be careful. You obviously can't be kickboxing with a huge belly. <laughs> It'd be a little odd, right? No, don't kick me in the belly. So I had to change that type of exercise. I had to change the mentality into doing much softer exercising. And then after you give birth, you still need to be careful. You can't just all of a sudden start kickboxing again. So what I knew or how I knew to stay in shape was no longer a viable answer. I had to figure out, I had to befriend the treadmill. I used to hate the treadmill. I never liked running, nothing. I had to do that because that and cycling on the stationary bike, elliptical machine, I had to do cardio. And uh, so I had to change the way I exercise. Now that it's been a few months, I'm going back into my high impact stuff, like the kickboxing and all that stuff, which I'm so happy for. It gets really boring running on a treadmill for two hours a day. It's just boring, you know, after a while. Well, I never ran for two hours a day, that'd be insane. But about an hour of total, you know, 20 minutes on the elliptical, 20 minutes on the bike, and then 20 minutes on the stationary bike, it kind of gets boring after a while. So I'm glad I can get back to beating people up in a good way, <laughs> in a healthy way. The only thing that I craved during my pregnancy was just stuff that people told me I wasn't allowed to eat, which is stuff that I was already eating before I got pregnant. Salami, sushi, all these raw foods, carpaccio. I never realized how much raw food I ate. And as soon as someone tells me I can't have something, that is it, I want it so badly and it drives me insane. Salami was my big thing. So I never had new cravings, but I craved what I couldn't have that makes any sense. I just finished a week ago. Um, I did it for five months in a week and I was very blessed and very lucky. I had a lot of milk um, and it wasn't that painful for me to do. And um, I just count myself really lucky. I have girlfriends that gave birth around the same time as I did and they just didn't have a lot of milk and it, it caused a lot of emotional anguish um, because I think a, a lot of moms feel a slight bit of guilt if they can't do it because it is really good for the baby. But you know, if you can't do it, you can't do it. But because I could, that's why I did it. But it's hard, you know, breastfeeding is hard. It controls your schedule, it controls your day. Um, it's it painful at times, not while she's breastfeeding, in between when you're filling up with milk, it's not the most comfortable feeling. It's not easy, it's really not. It's, it is a sacrifice that women make all over the world to feed their babies. You take your baby to work with you. <laughs> a lot of women don't have that luxury and I've been lucky I had that luxury. You know, I, I work in an industry where I have downtime. Um, we usually have some sort of hair and makeup room that they can hide out in. I don't know how to juggle it, you know? I'm still figuring it out for myself. I have good days, I have bad days. I have days that I come home at the end of the day and I'm like, well, I didn't manage this day very well. You know, I only got, I don't know, 20 minutes with my baby because every time I, I come home, she's sleeping or whatever. Like, I'm still figuring it out and I'm trying to figure out how our mothers did it. How did our moms do it? My mom was so young and she did it all by herself and she was working and she was still had me and I just feel inadequate next to my mother in a way. Um, and all these amazing women around the world that have nine to five jobs, that don't have the luxury of having nannies. Like I, I have help that can help me. How do these women do it? I do not know, but they do it. So what I do is I just take it day by day. In the morning I'm, or the night before, what do I need to do tomorrow? Okay, how does that fit into what Raven needs? Because Raven is number one. I make sure that she is set up, whatever needs to happen with her, and then everything else is around her. And just people just need to understand that. 
I think you juggling your schedule is also a matter of the people you're working with to juggle around your schedule. Daniel and I have been together for so many years. We didn't get married until eight years into our relationship. So we got married, nothing changed. I mean, if something changes after eight years, there's something wrong in your relationship. Um, and nothing much has changed in our relationship since we've had a baby. So that's the easiest part because he's so easygoing and he's so, we get along so well. Um, we very rarely fight. I think in the whole of our 13 years, no, sorry, uh, 11 years that we've been together, um, I think we fought five times the entire time. So we just get along. So being a wife and a husband is the easiest part. We just both have to figure out how to be parents. <laughs>